Hello, buddy, Princess Berry, and we're back at the Yacht Club Resort. Ahoy! I have my wish. <laughs> I'm a ship person because yes. we're going to the yachts. I don't know. We're going to yachts and steakhouse. <laughs> you guys asked us to go to yachts because the plant based option has changed. We haven't been here in a while. I'm sort of worried because of an inconsistent service here, but we're here to give them yet another chance to either impress us or break our hearts. Big thank you to our community because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't even know that this option was here. So thanks for messaging us and reaching out. Let's lose some food. Sure to subscribe. You heard the girl. This is the Crescent Lake Sunset, named after the Crescent Lake, which is what surrounds this hotel. It has Rosa Regale, which if we've been here for a while, we know how often I drink Rosa Regale, and tequila. Ooh, Rosa Regale, tequila, and juice is Rosa Regale elevated. It's gonna be hard to go back to regular version after this. It's four and a half out of five champagnes, champagnes, champagnes. We know that we have reached the pinnacle of lazy when we're trying to fantify Rosa Regale. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a bubbly wine. It's been overpriced since the day we drank it. Now it's getting mixed with things. Put in a cocktail glass. It still tastes like boxed wine. With fruit in it. It's good. It just has that like uh, I got you from Walgreens type of flavor. So no, no Walgreens. We survived the Walgreens wine for a long time. There are three dollar wines. Bang for buck cannot be beat. It's okay. It's a three out of five plus. The Funky Buddha Floridian. Bear gets this all the time. Hoppy, delicious, smooth. I love it. It's a three and a half out of five hops. It's beer. It does the beer things. Tried and true, Funky Buddha. It's been a while since I've had this, but I always enjoy it. I wish there was some other new rotation of beers in some of these restaurants. Uh, I love Funky Buddha. I'm never gonna say no to Funky Buddha, but I'm ready for different kinds. Funky Buddha is like the Skittles of beers. They have a ton of different flavors. Love a little bit. It's the more themed of the restaurant. Buddha, yacht, not exactly the first thing I think of. Belgian style ales just get me right here. So comforting. Like a blanket of pops and barley. Three out of five plus. Last time we were here, I had to have the allergy, gluten free allergy bread. This time we have sourdough bread that's vegan with sunflower seeds in it, which is awesome. I'm just gonna rip it open because my favorite topping of all of the things is here. This roasted garlic. It's hot, it's like butter, and you just wipe it across. Oh, it's everything. I wish they had it at every single Disney restaurant. Think about the most perfect garlic bread you've ever had in your life. Just like a little lukewarm. It's that. I dream about this garlic every single time I go to any Disney restaurant. I wish it was everywhere. Like I said, it's a five out of five. It's a princess of these item. The bread is a four out of five. It definitely enhances the 
garlic, and it would be even better if they had earth, earth balance butter. Nice little onion pull apart bread. Pull apart because you literally just pull it apart very easily. I like this bread, or at least the format of this bread. Now I'm gonna be a little greedy. I'm gonna do both. There we go. Just spread a little bit of that on there, like the butter that it is. And we're also gonna grab some of this sea salt butter here. It's definitely yachtsman style. I'm gonna do both. All oniony, spread, and delicious. Mm. I thought together it might be a little overpowering. It's just good enough. The garlic and the, the butter together are immaculate. It's four and a half out of five. Claws. It's good bread. Wedge salad, steakhouse wedge salad, vegan version with all of these beautiful tomatoes on it. We got like the plant-based ranch from next door. I think it's pretty. Let's see if it tosses my salad. Or if it's better than um, 50's prime time. So I'm gonna cut me a big piece here. All right, let me bring this down a little bit more because I'm, my eyes are bigger than my stomach. All right. Cheers to eating your vegetables. Thank you. It's extremely flavorful, much better than I actually expected it to be. It does toss my salad. I'm gonna give it four out of five salads. It's right there with 50's prime time, but I'm not licking the plate with this one. It is better than Steakhouse 71's wedge salad. That's for sure. What is feed? And it's bigger. I was just discussing all the reasons we take the Princess Foodie card away. The Smurgeon Steakhouse 71, it hurts me a bit. I feel personal. I think I almost, almost feel as bad as people whose ride just closed. I'm about to say the people whose just ride closed, I mean, great movie ride. Nobody cares about the other guys. Either way, back to this salad. Wood challenge is so much work, but if done well, they can be rather tasty. This one is a bit of a cutter. Let's get these radishes on here. Yeah, plenty of the vegan ranch. All the fixings. I will deal with the princess's besmirchment of our favorite restaurant, one of our favorite restaurants, because it is a really good salad. It's one of those salads that, it's not incredibly fancy. It's really just an uncut salad at, at its heart, but it's doing everything right. Crisp, fresh veggies, good dressing. It's a three and a half out of five plus. I honestly can't remember the last time I had beet carpaccio. Uh, I feel like it's been a while. Maybe it was Victoria and Albert's. Maybe somebody in the community that knows better than we do had one the last time I had it. I'm the forgetful one. But this is supposed to be one of their most popular appetizers. So I figured, why not give it a try? It's been long enough, I think. We have this thinly sliced beast with grilled artichoke. Got some cheeses on here. Got some capers fried with the... Um, a lemon dressing as well. I'm not even sure how to eat this. It's almost too fancy for me. But You're supposed to just like take take the piece to eat like the slice. The whole slice? Yeah. Yeah, just like that. I'd almost rather have been prosciutto. Prosciutto. Prosciutto or me, we have history. Beef carpaccio, eh. Signature dining is almost like a food puzzle. It's a much bigger array of powerful flavors than I expected. We're definitely getting a little caper and lemon, but the beef is also a really strong flavor. I think the beef is probably half the flavor. Mm -hmm. Everything served chilled. Let's so be prepared for that. If you're not familiar with beef or pot yet, um, a very strong like cheese flavor as well on top. It's very tasty, and I would say a light appetizer. I'm just looking for something delicate, something a little upscale. I think this works. 
If you have an issue with textures, this might be a problem with you because everything's a different texture and I'm not sure they all mix well together. And the cold, if you're not used to cold sliced beef like that, like a fine dining style, it can be a bit off-putting. The flavor's good though. So as it is, I'm giving it a three and a half out of five. I don't know how to order it again, but it's an experience I say you shouldn't skip if you're curious. We miss Toledo because Toledo had scallops like this, but at least we have them somewhere now. That's really nice. I appreciate it. We've got um, chickpeas in here, squash, uzu, because apparently we cannot escape uzu at the present. Ooh, this is like soft to cut. It doesn't even really need the knife. I guess maybe it does. take this little piece here. I guess the first bite, I'll just try it by itself. Mmm. Now these are the type of mushrooms that I can eat happily. Seasoned beautifully. It's got like a soy saucy taste to it. Absolutely love that. On its own, it's a four and a half out of five. Scallops. So let's see what it's like with everything together. I'm gonna grab some of this here. We got hopefully a little bit of sauce. Probably not. Cheers. Mmm. With all the added accompaniments, it really brings this plate together beautifully. You have um, a lot of different textures that you're working with on, on the plate. So if you have an issue with textures, you might have an issue with this, but other than that, it's not too rubbery, it's not too grainy, it's it's beautifully balanced. You get like a sweet and a salty action happening. Um, four and a half out of five scallops. I don't know if it would make me proactively come to Yachtsman because I've never really had a good, an inconsistent experience here, but it's really good. I, I, like I said, makes me miss Toledo's version. This is a beautifully bold version as well. I would say maybe, maybe book it if, if you can't find anything else and you want a nice fancy meal. There's an awful lot going on in this plate. As vegan food evolves, and it has evolved a great deal to turn in this channel, I'm always interested in the technique they use to make certain things taste like non-vegan things. In this case, scallops. Scallops on their own, for you of the vegan and vegetarian persuasion, are very easy to ruin. They're very easy to overcook, they're very delicate. Uh, they take a lot of seasoning, but they're very easy to ruin. And trying to mimic that with a mushroom takes skill. Let's go ahead and cut into this one. Cuts like a scallop? Does it taste like a scallop? Now I've got scallops in my main dish. They're nothing the size of these. You can get bigger scallops, but you should trend to the small size. Interesting. I'm gonna withhold judgment on the bite by itself. It's an interesting texture, it works well. It feels very, the soft flakiness that you get from a actual scallop. I say the consistency of that is a lot closer to a real scallop than vegan chicken is to real chicken, for sure. So let's get some of these other fixings in here. Let's get some of the grains and the chickpeas. And this little piece of scallop and some sauce. Let's see how everything comes together. That is most definitely the way. All those flavors are a punch. It's definitely different because the oyster or the scallop, the vegan scallops, are very um, 
chewy and earthy still, even though they do have like a sort of scalpy seasoning. I'm not getting like seafood from the seasoning on it, but that combined with the grains, the pumpkin seeds, and the chickpeas, it's uh, instead of saying like a smooth gravel road of textures, it's like a dirt road in the woods sort of texture. But the flavors are good. That's just like the buffing. It's like you're going from very soft to very chewy to it's an odd sort of texture shift. But the flavor is good. If you're plant based, I definitely think you would have this at the steakhouse house and not feel put out. It's definitely deserving of the flavors of being signature dining. I'd say as far as the actual scallop, it's like 75% of the way there. It's missing a little something that I can't my finger on. It's not fishy. It's not fishy. It's just, it's missing something. I'm not quite sure what it is. Overall, I'm giving the dish a four though because the flavors are there and I think it's a very, very good presentation. So here we have my main dish. This entire plate of the seafood sapaccio. Sapaccio? Yes, I butchered another food name. Uh, you hardcore foodies, I'm sure, will hammer it home about this. You have all these fixings in this bowl. You have huge tail on shrimp. You have mussels. You actually do have some baby scallops in here. In this sauce with, uh, it said pasta. But it looks more like a really couscous with some dill on here. And uh, some bread. The cross team needs to go with it. I'm never really sure how to start. I'm sure each of you has your own way. Do you take the tails off the shrimp as you go through? Do you pull the muscles out all in the beginning? So many decisions to make. Now what they do do, do do do, is they give you a little fork to remove the meat from the muscles. We're gonna pick one here at the back. Scoop all the stuff out. Hopefully I can present this so I'll get my fingers too messy. There we go. A little meat of the muscle. A little fork underneath. Go ahead and evict that. And then they give you a little bowl. And on the side, for your muscles. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna grab some scallop, and some shrimp, and some pasta. And I'm gonna load them up on this here bread. I'm sure this is not the proper way, but it's the bare way. And right now, that is the only way that matters. You know what? I'm gonna stack this big piece of shrimp up here too. All because I can. Yeah. It's definitely a bear bite. But this is how it's gonna get done today. Everything all together, that's definitely got that uh, seafood punch. It's definitely very of the ocean. Especially once you get down to the muscles and the scallops. The seafood cooked perfectly, not overcooked, not undercooked. Nice flavor and seasoning, go as well on the bread. We're gonna do that one more time. I'm just gonna get the meats and the pasta. We're gonna try this one more time. The Yachtsman is not known for its seafood. It's known for its steak. But I'm glad that this dish is actually what I consider to be above average. With some good flavors, they executed well. Would I suggest coming here if you're just craving hardcore seafood? No. But if you're here with friends who came for steak, and you want seafood, it's a solid dish. I would give it a uh, three and a half out of five. Minutes. I think the Yachtsman is about even with it. It's not better. This is another one of these items that you get 100% blame on the princess. Uh, I was not convinced that I wanted these. She was convinced that I should. She knows that I love Brussels sprouts. I get Brussels sprouts at almost every restaurant. We know that offers them. Why not yet? And these specifically are a hot honey bourbon Brussels sprouts. I feel like they're trying to give the Celier a run for their money. And I am standing here 100% in my bias on the side of the Celier. We shall see. 
We got some deep brussies, some candied pecans. Very good. Uh, it's looking kind of hearty. Get in there. Get something deep in there. Some sauce down in there if I can find it. Oh, yeah, there's some juices in there. It better be hot. The what spice? It's long gone out to sea. They're roasted brushes. They don't have the crisp and crunch as the brushes we had them probably before. The Cilier. I think my grill. But uh they're brushes, brushes. they're okay. I've had much better. I get a hit of the honey, none of the hot. You know how I feel about truth and advertising my food. Two and a half out of five points. Passable brushes at best. You're also dead inside. I feel dead inside. Is there any scale? None. I don't, I, I'm not even going to say I'm going like to 0.5 on a heat scale out of 10. It's a zero out of 10 on the heat scale. They are not spicy in the least. They're like almost the anti spice. I thought if I had something spicy in my mouth and I ate them, this would cool them off. That's how not spicy it is. So, you got the steakhouse coming with some slightly above average options. I think the first time that we came here, it was absolutely terrible. The second time that we came, it was a little bit better, but not that great. Yes. This third time hmm. has most certainly exceeded expectations and put the Yasmin on, uh, from the bottom of the pile to like the middle middle of the pile. Middle -ish. I definitely think we have seen consistent improvement to where now it's more of a recommend than one to absolutely avoid uh, for both plant-based and non-plant-based. It is uh, it's good food. The service is excellent tonight. It's still to me a bit of a dated restaurant, but if you absolutely have to have like the steak gifts or steaks, you do have Go to the Cellier. Yeah, that too. So if you guys want to see us do anything else, of course the comments are gonna be placed to let us know. Let us know what you thought about what you saw at Yachts tonight. If there's anything else you'd like to see us do, that's always gonna be a place to find us. Hit that notification bell if you want to see other videos like this and we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. Woo! We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe and comment because if you don't comment, I am pretty sure that Bear might like just throw his body over this railing and that would just be bad for everybody. Something like a store and a half, I'd survive. But you heard the girl. <laughs>